Okay, final exam review. What's your first question? Adam, what do you got? 44. All right, everybody flip to 44. <laughs> 44. Okay, great. Now listen, nobody is going to get a graphing question wrong tomorrow. I'm I'm adamant because all right, everybody watch. So if you get a graphing question, I would love for you to remember exactly what to do. I'd love for you to remember how to find the vertex, right? How to how to make the whole graph. However, if you have forgotten everything, you can always, always, always plug in some numbers. So for example, um, I don't know, let's see. How about we plug in, uh, well, let's just start with zero, right? Well, that doesn't really help me. Zero would get me out of negative 29. Let's plug in, I don't know, how about a, what did they, they have a lot of, let's plug in negative four, because that'll get me, that'll get me a couple of things. So you are allowed a scientific calculator. I'll show you how to do it for real, but if I'm going to plug in negative four, it should be easy enough. Negative two, uh, I want negative four squared minus 16 times a negative four minus 29. All right, so it's getting, giving me a positive three. So I plugged in negative four and it gave me out a positive three, just like this one did. Look at this one. When I plug in negative four, that's not a positive three. So I know it's not C. Uh, this one, I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be, it certainly isn't positive three, is it? Right at negative four, it's going to be something way down here. So you're not it. And same thing's happening here. You're not it. I already know that it's A. So even if you don't remember anything about graphing, you can always get it right. Just plug in a number. If you need to plug in two numbers, then plug in two numbers. What I would love for you to remember is, I know I just drew right over it, but, oh, A is negative, so it's down like a frown. Okay, well, they're all down like a frown, so that doesn't help us that much. Um, but let me just remind you how to find the vertex, okay? Finding the vertex was negative B over 2A. Do you remember that? It might be helpful for you to sort of keep a list of just, form Let, I'll start one. Just a list of formulas that would be helpful for you to remember. So negative B over 2A, that is to get you, oh my gosh, what is happening? It's like freaking Whoa. out. It's okay. Sometimes it does this, it's just like, oh, I'm gonna just zoom way in for fun. All right, there we go. So negative B over 2A, that is to find the X coordinate of the vertex. Right, so that'll get you this number right here, comma, something. And then do you remember how to find the something? Once you do the negative B over 2A and it gives you out some number? Yeah, you gotta plug that number back in. So if on problem number 44, I actually do that. Uh, negative B is now gonna be a positive 16 over two times A. So negative two times two is a negative four. So I get negative four comma something. So then I would just take negative four and plug it into the original. Luckily, I just happened to pick negative four. So I just did that. And I found out that it came out as negative four comma three. So there is my vertex. I know it's down like a frown. Uh, that should probably be enough for me to pick the right graph. If it's not, let's say that there's two graphs that are down like a frown that have that same vertex. Now I'm literally just going to plug in one more point next, nearby because now it's just going to depend how wide or narrow the graph is. And that's it. Um, other helpful formulas just off the top of my head, obviously the quadratic formula. 
I hope you know it by now. Oh, I didn't need to draw it there. That. I need to draw the line over the X of this part. There it comes. Um, let's see, other things were what else? Did we do just this formula in here? I feel like we did. We did? Yeah, let's throw that one on there. So distance formula. We have that. Um, I honestly don't remember if sum and difference of cubes is on there, but just in case, I'm going to give them to you. And so then we have the difference of two cubes. <laughs> so there's your sum and the difference. Um, what other form? I mean, your your general formulas like um, slope. You know, do you remember how to find slope? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus Y1. I'll write it down. <laughs> and um, how about like vertex form of a quadratic? Remember those? Those look like this, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Mm, anything else? Not that I can think of right now, but as we're working, if we think of any more, we'll add it. Okay, give me another question, yeah. Oh, sure. Point slope form was this one. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Any other ones you can think of? Okay. Um, so now give me other questions from this. Seven. Okay, so seven, here it is. Paper out. There we go. Okay, so number seven, this is one of our, uh, we have a fractional exponent. So remember what the rules are. 125 equals negative three plus a to the seven six. Step one is to get the thing being raised to the exponent by itself. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to add the three, add the three. 128 equals a to the seven six. Now, how do I undo that? So I don't want a to the seven six. I want just a equals blah, blah, blah. So how am I gonna get rid of the seven six power? 
Do you remember, Adam? Yes, I got to raise both sides to the power of the reciprocal, right? So I'm going to raise both to the six sevenths power. Another color. This is purple one, right? So I'm going to raise u to the six sevenths, and I have to raise u to the six sevenths. Right? So on the right hand side, Right, if I multiply those two, I just get one over one. So on the right, it's literally just A. On the left, I don't know what 128 to the six sevenths is. Um, I can't, I don't think I'm allowed to give you that chart tomorrow, but you don't need it. The calculator will do it. I just want to know what 128 to the six sevenths power is. So you grab a calculator, 128, and then when you want to raise something to the power of, you use that button right there. See that little, it's called a carrot key. It's like little, it's like up to the, so you raise it up to the, let's see. And then I just put six sevenths. Anytime you do a fraction, put it in parentheses. And there, we'll tell you. It does it for you. You don't even have to remember that you're supposed to be taking the seventh root and then raising it to the sixth power. The calculator will do it. So my answer is just 64. Well, that's so nice. So it, like what you said, the seven, the bottom, seven. Yeah, so what you're doing, so our answer is 64, right? So if I'm doing this without a calculator, 128 to the six sevenths power, that means the denominator is the root you take, right? That's the seventh root of 128, and then you raise it to the sixth power. So you're the opposite. <gasps> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, the denominator becomes the bird on the perch. Swings around. Yep. Are you allowed to use like that for the power? I don't think so. But you can always create your own if you really wanted to. So when you, I give you the final, if you want to just do, hey, what's one, one cube, two cube, three cube, four cube, because that's all the chart is, you know what I mean? But the fact that we'll do it all for you. Okay, um, Nathan, you had one too? Uh, yeah. 46. 46. Oh, is our answer even a choice? Oh, it is. Okay, hooray. Choice A. 46. Let's see. <laughs> this one is, this one's particularly bad, but we know how to do it. So let's give it the old fantastic try. 46, you said, right? But listen, we're gonna work smarter, not harder, first of all. Okay, I don't know the answer to this. I know that at most there's going to be five answers, right? Right? Okay, so I, they all have five answers. Okay, cool, so that doesn't help me. However, I do notice that they all have negative three-fifths as an answer, don't they? So that means negative three fifths, I know is gonna work. So let me start by plugging in the negative three fifths and then see if that gets me down to something smaller that I can kind of then deal with. Oh, oh no, no, never mind. I thought that might have sort of saved us a little bit. All right, anyway, so let's plug in negative three fifths doing synthetic. And I know it should work, right? I know it's because every single one of them has negative three fifths. So that's how I know it's gonna work. All right, let's try it. So uh, let's bring down our coefficients. 15, nine, 85, 51, negative 140 and negative 84. I believe on the final, here's the thing, like when we make the final, every question is carefully curated, right? So we, we don't want ones that are this bad. When I'm just making these reviews, I'm literally just saying, give me problems. So I have no idea what's gonna come up. All right, so let's plug in negative three fifths. So I don't want you to be going into this thinking like, oh my gosh, these questions are gonna be so hard. They're going to be reasonable, okay? All right, so drop down the first number. Negative three fifths times 15, that's gonna get me negative nine, right? Ooh, yes, we get a zero. 
Okay, negative three fifths times 85. Remember, divide down, multiply up. So 85 divided by five, oops. 85 divided by five, 17 times a negative three. Uh, negative 51, yes. Zero, zero, drop it down, negative 140. Negative 140 divided by five times a negative three. I get 84, exactly what I was expecting, and I get a zero in the end. So yes, we know that negative three fifths works, but remember what we have left now. That's my remainder. That's my constant. That's x to the first, x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth. So my new quadratic looks like this. 15x to the fourth plus 85x squared minus 140. Hey, can I divide a 15 out of this? No, darn it. I could divide by five. I don't know if that's going to help us any. You want to divide by five or just leave it? Yeah, well, let's divide by five. Why not? 85 divided by five is 17. And 140 divided by five is 28. Now, I do have a quadratic pattern here, right? Normally, it's x squared, x, and then nothing at all. This time, it just happens to be x to the fourth, x squared, and then nothing at all. So what I can try and do is I can factor this like normal if it factors. And then I would just leave, um, instead of it being like x plus two, it would be x squared plus two. So I can try that. But if I'm looking at the answers, honestly, um, it's not looking great. Let's see if we can rule out choice A, because see how that's the only other one that has like a nice number, two. So if I plug in two, let's just see if it, if it comes out as zero. Because if it does, then I know my answer is A and I don't have to go any further. So let's try it. Three times two to the fourth plus 17 times two squared minus 28. Does not come out as zero. So I know choice A is not it. All right, so where do we go from here? So now, um, gosh. Hello. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I have so many. All right, uh, Maddie, Angelina, Elise, and Jeff. Finish? Yeah. Thank you. I can grab Elise's too. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Elise. 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 I think our next best option, I think I'm going to try plugging in one of these irrationals. What? What? It is. Your last full day. Yep. I plugged in positive to it. But yes, that's exactly what I would have tried. But so now what I honestly might do is try plugging in. Let's plug in the I root seven. If I root seven doesn't work, then I know it's C. And if it does, hopefully I'm down to something easy enough that I could figure out between B and D. So I'm gonna do synthetic with I root seven. I think that's the just route I'm gonna take. So three, don't forget your zero placeholders. Zero, 17, zero, negative 28. All right, let's plug in. Man, this is gonna be bad. All right, let's try it. I root seven. Three, I root seven. So now I'm multiplying these two together, right? Guys, what do you get? when you have three i squared, what's that really? 
So when I'm multiplying this by this, that's going to get me three I squared. And then root seven times root seven is just seven, right? But what is three I times I, three I squared? Negative three. So I have negative three times seven. I get a negative 21. Everybody see that? So negative 21 goes right here. I'm going to add these two together. That's a positive four. Multiply, I get 4i root 7. Is that a negative? Oh, yep, yeah, thank you. Good catch. And now let's multiply these two together. Oh, and I think it is going to get us 28. Because that's going to be a positive 4 times 7. I get a positive 28, so I get a 0. So what does this tell us? This tells us that i root 7 works. So I'm crossing out choice C. And now I was hoping, uh -oh. I was hoping that, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, this one's really hard. This one's awful. You're, this won't be on it, right? No. Okay. Not, not one this bad. Because this is really, really bad. It is really, really yeah. bad. Because like, I don't even see any of the answers. So it. I guess now what I might do is just try two root three over three and see if that works. If that works, I know it's D. If it doesn't, it's got to be B. Ooh. My gosh. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to, I wouldn't use these new numbers because they're terrible. They've got I's in them. I'm going to go back to uh, right here. 3, 0, 17, 0, negative 28. And I'm going to try and plug in 2 root 3 over 3. And it's probably going to be a disaster, but maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, look, already it's kind of not. Multiply those two, you get 2 root 3. OK, add it together, 2 root 3. Multiply. So that's going to get me 4 times 3 is 12 over 3 is 4. Add these together, that's 21. Multiply, that's 14 root 3. Is that right? 7, yep, 14 root 3. Add 14 root 3. Multiply. So it's going to be 28 times 3 divided by 3. So that's just 28. Hey! All right. So 2 root 3 over 3 works, Yay. which means that my answer has got to be choice D. Wow. Well, that was good practice in dealing with eyes and synthetic. But yeah, that one, that one was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So by the way, right, what we're supposed to do when we are given something like this, right? Pretend that we don't have, or even, yeah, this one, nobody's nice to start off with. Oh, gosh. These are just particularly terrible. What you could do with this one, because it follows that quadratic pattern, is you could use quadratic formula on this, even though it's not a quadratic, but it follows the pattern of having your, uh, this one twice as big as that one, and then nothing at all. So anything that falls into that, you can pretend like it's a quadratic for a minute. So for example, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying pretend that this problem, instead of reading as it reads, Pretend it reads like this, 5x squared minus 23x minus 42. And then solve this like you normally would. The only difference is, I don't know what the factors end up being, but let's just pretend for a second the factors come out to be like, you know, I don't know, 3x plus 1 and 4x minus 6. I have no idea. The only difference, because it's not this, it's this, I'd have to make these x's squared. That's it. So if you see that pattern where this one is twice as big as the middle one, and then you have nothing at all on the end, you can treat it like a quadratic and then just go back and kind of fix it. I hope that makes sense. Sure. The reason, so on number 47, normally what we do, we take all of the factors of the last number, 42 in this case, and divide them by all of the factors of my lead coefficient, five. That gives me that list of possible rational roots. It is possible that it doesn't have any rational roots. And clearly that's the case in this one, because look at all of your choices. None of them are rational. So you don't even get like that little stepping stone 
Like, even if some are irrational or imaginary, at least usually there's a rational one that I can start by finding and make everything easier on me. These ones just so happen that they're all irrational. So you, even if you came up with that list of numbers and plugged every single one in, because it's multiple choice and I can see, none of them are gonna work. So really your only option on 47 would be to do something like this. But I don't believe we put any of those on the final. So sorry that these came out this bad. Does every algebra two cost like the same thing? We sure do. You sure? Who made it though? If we all like you all just yeah. yeah. Are there any new teachers for like yeah, wait, when do you make it? Like, when do you make it? Unlike those days that you don't come to school, but we do. Uh, days like, like uh, that. Okay, give me another one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Which one? 48. Yes, that's, I like that one. Do you want to do that with synthetic or long division? Okay. So remember, you can't do every single one with synthetic. The ones that you can are these ones, where it's a variable and then just plus minus a number. If you have a coefficient in front of that variable, so if it was like 3k minus 2, you're going to have to do long division. But this one's not. I can do it. The only thing you have to remember with this is, well, there's a couple things. Drop down your coefficients. Don't forget about zero placeholders. What is the number I plug in? It's positive two, because I'm always thinking about what's the zero, right? This is a factor, k minus two. The zero that would come out of that is positive two. So let's pop in a positive two and see what we get out. Drop down the first number, multiply, and multiply, and multiply. All right, so I get this list of numbers, and then remember how the breakdown works. The very last number is your remainder. Then that's your constant, that's x to the first, and that's x squared. So when you write this answer nice and neatly, it's going to look something like x squared minus 10x minus 6. And we take our remainder and we put it over whatever we were dividing by. Oh, they're x's. I've been, they're k's. These all, should all be k's. k minus 2. And that whole thing should be our answer. Is that a choice? Looks like c. I don't know if you can do this though. On number 48? Yeah. You can try. But I don't know. So wait, you want to take this four term thingy and factor it. Yeah. But then. I don't know. Like, how is that? Like, it's not so big. Yes, so this is an example of like, if I wanted you to do like five <coughs> divided by 13, right? That fraction doesn't simplify, but you can do five divided by 13, it's just not pretty. That's what's happening here. So it's not necessarily a fraction that can be reduced. That's what we did in the last chapter. Yeah, reducible fractions. Here, I'm literally just forcing the division. Yeah. Um, Nathan, you had another one too, right? Oh yeah. Of course we can. Yes, all righty. Um, so let's look at 54. So let's pretend it's final exam day. You don't have your little chart that I give you. And you're like, mm, mm, this is a to the fourth problem. I wish I had that chart. Let's recreate it. One to the fourth is one. Two to the fourth is 16. Three to the fourth is, I don't know, but my calculator sure does. Three to the fourth, oh gosh, why am I keeping that wrong button? That's 81. Oh yeah, duh. Four to the fourth would be 256. Five to the fourth. 625, and that's enough to do this problem, right? So even though you don't have a chart, you can make the chart for yourself if you want it. So what do we do? We're gonna split all of this apart. We're gonna take the fourth root of 648, the fourth root of x squared, 
the fourth root of y to the eighth and the fourth root of z. Oops, z, there we go. And I'm going to handle each of these like they're their own mini problem. So I start with this one, the fourth root of 648. That's why I'm using this little chart here. I want the number in this list that divides into 648, preferably the largest. So let's try 648, does 256 go in? I have no idea, nope. 648, let's try 81. Oh good, 81 goes in eight times. So I'm gonna split this up into the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of eight. Now, according to my little chart, I know what the fourth root of 81 is, it's just three. Everybody okay so far? Now let's look at the variables. Whenever your exponent is smaller than your index, like in this case, right? Two is smaller than four, you cannot simplify that. That's literally just gonna stay fourth root of x squared. However, when I get to this one, right? Eight is obviously bigger than four. Remember, you're just dividing. I'm just gonna do eight divided by four. So when you take the fourth root of y to the eighth, it's literally just y squared. That's it. This one here, the exponent is smaller than the index. So I just leave it as the fourth root of c. Okay, now I'm gonna multiply any of them that are not in the root together. So that's three y squared. And then all of the ones that are in a root get multiplied together into one big group. Eight x squared z. That's it, is that choice? Oh, hooray, choice D, it looks like. Now, what happens when you have something like, let's look at 55 real quick. So 55, same idea. I have fourth root of 64, fourth root of M, fourth root of N to the fourth, and fourth root of P to the sixth. All right, so I start with my number, 64. 16 goes into 64, right? Four times, so I'm gonna split that one up. Fourth root of uh, 16, fourth root of four. Fourth root of 16 is just two, okay? Fourth root of M just stays. So that's just gonna drop right on down, fourth root of M. What's the fourth root of N to the fourth? Which is N. Oh, and I miscopied. This was P to the sixth. Now, for the last one, right? P to the sixth in the original. Yep, I miscopied. Six is bigger than four, but I can't do six divided by four. So that's when you say to yourself, okay, I can't do six divided by four. Uh, let me go down by one. Oh, I can't do five divided by four either. Go down another. You can do four divided by four. So this will split into the fourth root of P to the fourth times the fourth root of p squared, right? Because four plus two is still six. But now fourth root of p to the fourth is just p. Fourth root of p squared just stays. Ta-da! And now multiply them to n, p, and then a fourth root of four m p squared. And check if that's a choice. You keep your fingers crossed. Is that C? Yes, choice C. All right, give me another one. Yeah, 58. 58. Okay, so 58, you've got cube root of three over the cube root of 375. So first thing you're gonna look for, as long as they're both under the same root, which they are, you can reduce three and 375 with each other, just like a normal fraction. 
And three does go into 375, right? 125 times. So that's just like I'm reducing a fraction, one over 125. Now they're both still under the root though. So now I want the cube root of one. Luckily it's just one. And now I want the cube root of 125. Isn't that just five? So our life has become very easy. What happens though, if the bottom like doesn't cancel out all the way? So for example, say you do some problem and it's like four over the cube root of five, right? You're here, you can't do any reducing. You're like, well, what the heck am I supposed to do with this thing? Because you can't leave any roots in the denominator, right? It doesn't matter if it's square root, cube root, whatever. You're not allowed to leave it in the denominator. So we got to get it out of there. How? Exactly. The only way to undo a cube root is to cube something, but you can't walk around and just cube a random number. If you could take the $5 in my wallet and cube it, that would be great, right? You can't do that. What you can do is you can exchange, right? A $5 bill for five singles. That's the same thing. So in math world, the same thing is multiplying by one. So I can multiply by that fraction, isn't that just one, right? Cube root of five over cube root of five, that's just one. But then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. So I am only multiplying by one, right, each time. However, I've done it in such a way so that now my denominator, if I multiply straight across, cube root of five, cube root of five, cube root of five, just becomes a five. My numerator now is going to be four cube root of 25. See how that works? So now this is the same value. If you pick up a calculator and you put the original in, it's going to spit out some crazy decimal. You put this in, it will spit out the exact same decimal. I have not changed the value of this fraction. I've just rewritten it so I don't have any roots in the denominator. I changed the four quarters into a dollar. That's what I've done here. Okay. Give me another one. Flip through, even, yeah, make sense. 63, ooh, good question. 63, looks like this. We've got 36 X to the sixth raised to the one half power. Okay, so remember when you are raising a thing to a power, everything in that thing gets that power. So this really turns into 36 to the one half and X to the, what's the X on the X going to be? Say it with conviction. Yeah, uh, you're just multiplying the exponents, right? So six times a half is x to the third. Now, um, I'm sure the choices don't look like this. I had to figure out what 36 to the one half power even is. If you don't know, you're lucky because you have a calculator that does, but you probably know this one. What's 36 to the one half? Six, it's just the square root. One half power is the same thing as square root. Right? Square root raised to the first, so I just get six x to the third. Is that a choice? Oh, good choice, C. All right, yes. You can rewrite it. Yeah, that's called, um, so 36 to the one half. That's exponential form, and then you can turn it into radical form. The denominator becomes your index. So there really is a tiny little two there when it's a square root that we never write it. 36, and then the numerator is what you raise the whole thing to. So square root of 36 is six to the first is just six. But that's important to know when you have something weird like um, eight to the two thirds power. You need to know, oh, that means cube root of eight and then I square it. So if I had to rewrite that in radical form, that's what it looks like. Or remember, it could look like this because it's multiple choice, so I don't know how they're going to put it out there. The exponent can be on the inside too. We always do it this way because this way your numbers are so much smaller because the cube root of eight is just two squared is four. Here you have to do, okay, eight squared is 64. And now think of the cube root of that. Your numbers get way bigger, way faster. 
but they are the same. The cube root of 64 is four, but it's a lot easier for us to do it this way. Okay, give me more. We have like a half hour, so let's make it count. 87. Mm hmm. All right. Oh, wait, I was looking at 88, 87. <laughs> All right, this, this one is more fair. All right, so let's look. We can rule out one of these right away. It says state the number of complex roots. That's just how many total roots this thing is going to have. So how many total roots does number 87 have? Four. How do I know? Because that the, that's the degree of the whole thing. This thing is only going to have four answers. So we're crossing off choice C right away. That can't be right. That says we're going to have five. And we don't. So see you later, alligator. All right. They did give me one of my zeros. And because this zero happens to be imaginary, they gave me two zeros, didn't they? Yes, the conjugate pair will always also be a zero, even if they don't tell you. They never go to the party alone. They're always going to go as a pair, but I don't actually think that that helps us. Oh, it does. Cross off choice A, that's not right. Yes. All right, so now I'm down to uh, choices B or D. And here's something I notice. See how they both have negative two? And they both have, oh wait, they don't have both have positive one. All right, they both have negative two. So I'm not even gonna bother testing negative two because I know that it works. Let me test three. If three works, I know it's B. If three doesn't work, I know it's D, right? So we're gonna do synthetic. Let's drop down all our coefficients. One, negative three, six, two, negative 60. Make sure I didn't miss anything. One, I didn't need zero placeholders on this one, right? Nope. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna plug in one because it's easier. Nope, didn't work. So one did not work. So D is out, it's gotta be choice B. If they don't give you a zero at all, right? That's where you got to come up with the list of possible rational roots. So that was taking all the factors of 60 and dividing it by the factors of, in this case, one. And then you keep plugging them in until somebody works. But remember, this is multiple choice. Use it to your advantage. There are 50 questions, right? But you only have the time that they give you. I think blocks are a little bit extended. So instead of ending at 9.05, it's like 9.15 or something. So you have a couple extra minutes. You do have a break between A and B blocks, um, but. A break? Like where? They give you like 10 minutes. Just to like walk around. Yeah, just like in between passing time. Uh -huh. It's just a little bit longer. Oh, okay. Um, what else? Oh yeah, but my point in saying that was, you know, work smarter, not harder. I won't, I, you should not be spending 15 minutes on one question, right? So they're multiple choice, use it to your advantage. So, you know, you'll have plenty of time, but I'd rather you get through it and then you can always go back and revisit ones. Oh yes, I guess. So. And there's only 50, not, However many, what are we up to? 100 94. something? 94, yeah. That's left. Oh, how are you with the um the things at the end here? These were, yeah. So let's do these because these were ones that I had to like add in so you don't even see the answers there. So like number 90. Woo! <laughs> oh gosh. Well, let's just briefly talk about maybe we won't do the whole thing, but we'll just kind of get ourselves set up here. So you need to buy some filing cabinets. You know that cabinet X is $10, requires six square feet of floor space and holds eight cubic feet of files. Cabinet Y is 
require, sorry, the space didn't seem to, I don't know why there's no spaces there, but whatever. Requires eight feet of floor space, holds 12 cubic feet of files. You have been given $140 for this purchase, so you don't have to spend that much. The office room has no more than 72 square feet of cabinets. How many of which models should you buy in order to maximize short storage volume? Remember, it is multiple choice. So even if you have a problem like this, you're going to have four graphs, four sets of equations. Everything's going to be there for you. So it should be relatively easy to do process of elimination. But let me just kind of refresh your memory what you're looking for. You had constraints, the things that I have to worry about. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's just say that X is going to be number of cabinet X. And let's have Y be the number of cabinet Y that I'm going to end up purchasing. I can't purchase negative cabinets, right? Of course not. So X has to be greater than or equal to zero. Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, what else does it say? I only have $140 to use. So they're $10 and $20. So whatever I spend on cabinets X and cabinets Y has to be less than or equal to 140. Agreed? That's all the money I have to spend. That's the money I'm spending on X. That's the money I'm spending on Y. Together has to be less than or equal to 140. Um, and what else? I only have 72 square feet of, um, that's all that I can fit. So six square feet are used up by X, eight square feet are used up by Y, and I only have 72 square feet to sort of deal with. So based on this alone, you'll probably be able to pick your right choice without even having to graph it. Um, but, How many of which miles should you buy in order to maximize storage? Okay, and then we had our objective function. So my main goal is to have the most storage that I could possibly have. So my total, I'll use T for total. The total I'm gonna get is six square feet from X and eight from Y. So that's what I'm trying to maximize. Um, yeah, and then what do you do? You graph these things. Remember getting the feasible region and we would shade it in? I'll do it real quick. So now you're just graphing all of these things. So this one, I'm gonna rewrite it in terms of Y. So first, let me divide everybody by 10. And now get that in terms of y because I'm supposed to be. So I would minus the x divided by 2. So I'd have a negative 1 half x plus 7. So there's that one ready to graph. And then this one, let's switch to purple. Oh, I can't divide by 6, but I can divide by 2. So that's 3x plus 4y. Six. So minus three X and divide by four. Negative three fourths X plus nine. Okay, there's those two and then I just graph them. So for the first one, I'm gonna start at seven and we're going down one over two. And I want to shade y is less than, so I'll be shading below that. And then the next one, I'm going to start at nine. And I'm going down three over four. One, two, three, one, two. Woo, ding, 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 didn't match right there. And I want to be below this one as well. So my feasible region is right in here. So then what did, oh, sorry. You guys didn't tell me I was off. 
There's my feasible region. I didn't graph this one perfectly. They met right here. So there's one. And then we took all the corners. Remember that? You take the coordinates of your corners and you plug it into your objective function and see who gets you the highest. So my coordinates are uh, 0, 0,7, 8, 3, and 12, 0. So let's plug them in for x and y and see who gets us the best. That'd be 0 plus 56, so I get 56 there. Uh, six times eight is going to be 48 plus 24. What is that? 72. And then what's 12 times six? Also 72 plus zero. So this particular time, there ends up being a tie. That's weird. That won't happen tomorrow. So it wouldn't matter if I did eight and three or just 12 of cabinet X. Yeah, go so fast. Okay, so there's that one. And then the other one we have to do is 91. Do you remember graphing piecewise? I hope, well, oh dear. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna try it right now. So first of all, uh, my graph is going to split at negative one and at positive three. So at negative one, just, this is not part of the graph, but since it's multiple choice, just look for that to start with. If you have a graph that doesn't split at negative one and positive three, it's not the right choice. Don't pick that one. So we can start there. Uh, next thing. So I'm gonna graph 2x plus one. That's a straight line, isn't it? But it should only be graphed when x is less than or equal to negative one. So how do you normally graph 2x plus one? Don't you start at one and go up two over one, up two over one, right? But you can't draw it here. So yeah, I normally start at one. I don't have any more pencils because I'm writing stuff with them. But you start here and you go up two over one, up two over one. Don't draw it there though. You're only gonna draw it over here, but it's the same line. So what you can do, let me grab a little straight edge here. Let me line it up where it would be. Up one, start at one, go up two over one, up two over one. Let me line this up. Okay, so instead I'm just gonna draw up my graph over here. When it hits negative one, it should be an open dot. What does the absolute value of X look like? What kind of graph, what shape is it? It's a V shape, right? Absolute values are V shapes. So if you remember, absolute value of X just starts at the origin and just goes up one over one. And then I just do the other thing Right, it's just a V shape like that. Uh, so when I hit negative one, it should be a closed dot. When I hit positive three, it should be a closed dot. So there's the middle section. The middle section is always easy because it's where you normally graph. And then Y equals negative X. That's just the diagonal line starting at the origin, down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. I just don't start it till I get here. Open dot, down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. That's it. So there is my graph. So even without actually graphing the whole thing, you can probably get your answer of doing multiple choice by seeing if the graph split at the parts they're supposed to. And you can also check the dots, right? That one had to be an open dot. These two have to be closed. That one has to be open. So doing things like that can probably lead you to the right answer without having to do a ton of graphing. All right. Give me other ones. Are you sure? There is, I definitely wanted to, um, I remember I was looking at the final and there was, they use a notation that we really didn't talk about. 
So I wanted to just make sure that I clarified. Do you remember talking about end behavior? Yeah, here it is. Do you remember like if you have X to the fourth, what the ends do and X to the fifth, what the ends do when I made you show me with your hands? Yes, okay. So on here, it's not gonna say show me with your hands, right? So let me show you the notation that they're gonna use. So if I gave you something like, your directions might say something like, describe the end behavior. Yes, oh, I spelled describe wrong. You know, show me with your hands what that would be. What would the end behavior of this thing be? Reach for the sky, right? How do you know? Whenever it's even, they go together. If A is positive, they go up together. If A were negative, they'd go down together. So in this case, you know, okay, it looks like that. But the notation they're going to use, they are going to look like this. Oh, hi! Guess what A block gave me? What? Flowers and a gift card and a koozie and snacks and and things and a gift cards dumps. Someone likes to give me, but no, we give They're respect. not. We give you respect. A headache. A good laugh. I don't know. A block's jokes were like on point for this last test. Right yeah. See. You see. You see. Anyway, see you, Dean Block. What? You leaving early? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so I was telling you what the notation is going to look like. You ready? It might look something like this. Oh. Yes. So what this is saying, remember f of x is y and x is obviously x, right? So this is saying y. So as your x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, what's happening? Where is my graph going? Y's are going up, aren't they? So kind of look at this part first. As x is going, here's a, a coordinate plate, right? As my x's are getting bigger, the y's are going up to positive infinity. So that is true, right? So I would have that. So to describe this one, as my x's are going to negative infinity, so as the x's are getting smaller. So that might look like this. What are my y's doing? My y's are going up as well. So this is gonna look like to positive infinity as well. So that is what would describe this particular scenario. So annoying notation, I agree. We didn't spend a ton of time. On, I don't even think we use this at all, but I know you know, oh, they both go up. So hopefully um, you can see, all right, yeah, as X is in going further and further positive to positive infinity, what's happening to the Y? Oh, the Y is also going up. So same thing's happening here as X is going to negative infinity. So I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller in this direction. In this case, Y is also going up. So what would it look like for something else? Say you had, um, I don't know, Y equals negative X to the third plus 17, <laughs> something like that. So first show me with your hands what this thing does. So first of all, odd exponent. So one's up and one's down, right? Right, so since it's negative. So a normal, if it were positive, 
it would be doing this. Since it's negative, it's going to go switch to this way. Okay. So this side's going up while this side's going down. So let's see if we can kind of piece that together with the notation. So as X is going towards positive infinity, what's happening to Y? So as X is going this way, the Y is going down to negative infinity, right? So that's gonna look like this. Y is going down as X is going to positive infinity. Yep, sure. So that's how that would look. Let's do the other side. As X is going to negative infinity, my Y's are going up. Okay, so I think there is just one question that uses that notation and there's another piece to it. So I'm hopeful that you can, um, you know, that you won't find that one that troublesome. Are there any other ones or any other anything that you want me to go over or talk about or anything? Are you sure? All right. And I think that was the only thing I wanted to make sure that I mentioned before tomorrow. But otherwise, okay. May. Let me turn off the video. Our last video. <laughs>